Hey, so how buzzed are you? So I have recently posted about trauma being like a very, very bad bee. I mean like a bee on crack. And when that bee stings you and then it flies off, it leaves the stinger inside of you. So imagine this, that let's just say that you've had multiple traumas and yet you have tried everything you know to fix them, to quiet them, to deal with them, but that hasn't actually happened, then guess what? Depending on how many stingers you've got left inside of you, because the events may be over, your personal traumas may not actually still be happening, meaning you may not still be actively abused, you know, actively, you know, um, uh, assaulted, you may not be in those same set of circumstances, but what you find is that you're buzzed, all right? So just how buzzed are you? Because when the buzzer, okay, keeps going off inside of you, if you will, the stinger. So remember, the event may not be happening anymore. It may be over. You're not even with that person anymore. You may not even be in those circumstances. It may have happened when you were a child. It may have happened, you know, three years ago. You're not still currently active in it, but the stinger is still inside of you and it keeps buzzing. Some of us drank to get that buzzer to hush, right? Some of us have done many things. We've excelled. We tried to ignore it. We've tried to be clever in our dealings with it. See, unfortunately, the church has tried to be way, way too clever and in dealing with the um, issues of life, the traumas of our life. You know, and trauma can be like a Mack truck hitting you one time. I mean, how many times do you have to get hit by a Mack truck for it to make an impression on you, to leave a major, major stinger inside of you? Well, only once. But then what if you've lived under the slow drip of it every day? every day, every other week, every month, every year. And it's just slow hitting, slow hitting. Guess what? That still can make a really deep ravine inside of you. Many, many ruts of trauma inside of your soul and in your physiological being, your body. So imagine then all of that is in you, and in all of your ways, all of the things you've done, and all of the cleverness of things that we try to do. We try to outgrow them. We try to shut them down. We try to educate our, our bee stingers. We attempt to get evolved. All right, well, here's what I'm going to say to you, is the church has gone on too long trying to be clever in all of her ways. And we've got to repent of our cleverness and we must return to the cross of Jesus Christ. You see, everything outflows from the cross of Jesus Christ. Many times people only relegate the cross to Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Well, actually, he died for the sins of the world, which includes everyone who inflicted trauma on you and for all of those that you have inflicted trauma on. Everything, everything was dealt with in the cross. And I don't have time here to go into all of that. Those would be things you could connect with me, you know, somewhere else to catch hold of all of that. But we've got to come to the place that we realize that the, the reason that oftentimes things are just flooding the streets is because we thought everyone was doing well. But I believe that in the midst of what the enemy means for evil, God is using for good to bring exposure to us that all the things that we thought were going to fix everything, it hasn't. Because now when current things are happening and we see someone else being truly traumatized, we see events, we see comments, just a comment can set your stinger off. And the, 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 the sensitivity... I mean, has anybody ever had just like a splinter in your finger? You have a stinger. You have something left over. 
and it gets red and inflamed around it. And now anytime something touches it, do you understand that we are an inflamed people? That we are those who have taken many different routes and ways of trying to heal ourselves. But God himself has provided the same thing to you and I that he provided for himself. You see, if it took what Jesus Christ did on the cross to satisfy God, then what makes us think it's going to take anything less to truly satisfy us? This is why oftentimes we are not survive we are not living we are surviving. And what happens is is that when people's survival mode suddenly gets triggered to a point and let's just say you have multiple traumas still unresolved inside of you and all of a sudden something of great magnitude happens and it is like 12 bee stingers going off inside of you at the same time and then you wonder why everybody looks like they're about to lose their mind. And what it ought to be revealing to us is that the source of our freedom and our deliverance and our um, healing and everything has been the wrong source. It hasn't worked because the veneer has blown off. And God is exposing that all of that. That's why people are so shocked right now. People are so unbelievably torn up about things that are happening all over. I'm talking about on every layer of life. There are, there are friendships that are being deeply affected. You see, there are uh, churches being ripped apart. There are things going on within families and lives, and people are like, what is going on? But what I want to simply suggest to you, I just want to submit to you for you to think about is because everything that we have tried to deal with all of our trauma, it's not worked. It's never going to work. Man's ways, like those who wounded you, my friends, they can't really heal you. And when we keep going to people, we keep going to others, and it's like knocking on people's door. You know, it's like, I need you to know what happened to me. I need you to know what happened to me. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. And no matter how much other people hear you, they're like, still, no, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Right? Okay. All right. See, because your cry is not the problem. Your source, where you're taking it. You see, because I don't want you to stay with the trauma bonds and staying trauma bonded, okay, to the things and to the kind of people and to the sources that you've used before. I want you to bond with him. The only one that truly understands your cry. Now, not because I think there's nothing to be done, you know, human to human. But what I'm telling you is that humans might be surely the source of all of your inflicted trauma. But they are not the source of your core trauma. They're not the source of your core deliverance and your healing only Jesus Christ is that. You see, I'm just going to say it one more time. Our core trauma, my friends, is not what someone else has done to me. It's not what someone's done to you. I didn't say it wasn't traumatic. But that situational trauma is nothing like the trauma of being born separated from God himself. We are born separated from life himself, from love himself. And then we spend our life trying to adapt, to accommodate and assimilate to a state of, of trauma because we are independent from him. He is not our source. We are our source and other humans are our source. Whew, go figure. So you keep trying to find a better batch of humans. You keep trying to find people that finally understand you. And even once you find people who may have had like experiences like you, I'm telling you, after a while, nobody can hear you the way you long to be heard. But let me tell you that I believe, this is just me, you can take this or leave it, is I believe those who are well-adjusted are the most traumatized. And I think that's a part of what we're seeing right now is all those things that have made us well-adjusted. 
God is blowing the lid off of these things because he wants to bring you to himself. Hmm? He wants to bring you to himself. You see, I don't think people should be well adjusted to their state of independence from God. I don't want to do and see how well I can do without him. You don't even know how traumatized you are when you're still earning your own love, deserving what you get, performing for everything, hmm? or being pitiful enough to get everything. But I'm just here to tell you that we have not yet come to the full status of what God has for us. And until our core trauma issue is dealt with, then no other situational trauma can really be dealt with. This is the aspect of where God is bringing us to himself. And until we come to him on a personal level and let him truly deal with every bee stinger that is still in us, we are not fit now, to truly move out into our assignment, which is to be able to call others to him. So if you're trying to be people's hero or you're turning out to be their villain, I don't want to be either. I don't want to be your hero and I don't want to be your villain. I want to lead you to him. And I want to lead a truly traumatized world to him. As much as it depends on me, whatever he says my corner of the market is. I know I can't get to every human being, but, but come on, surely we can mobilize a real true church because once you have come to him and to his cross, because it's there and only there that you can realize that he knows exactly what you have lived through. He's experienced it. He bore it in his body. He literally became the literal dumping ground for everything, and then he took it, and he took it to the grave, and then he came up in resurrection power. And when we write that off as like, oh yeah, that, you know, it's like, this is why I will say with the Apostle Paul, I have resolved to know nothing but him and him crucified. For in him crucified, all has been done to bring me back to the Father to literally cause me to be the person that I was always meant to be. Whether you hear me or anybody else hears me, I, I can't do anything about that. And I can't control every bee, okay? But let me tell you what, God, God has the total solution. How that gets meted out and how that may actually look in people's lives, I understand that can have a uniqueness to it. But the source, my friends, is the same for every human being. And we've got to be those that say, you know what, I'm not gonna keep going around putting the same demand on people. Because what will happen is, is that the same force of trauma that came against you to traumatize you, now that same force, it will morph and it will look different, but now its force is, is that you better hear me. You better give me what you owe me. Have you ever read Matthew 18 where it says the one servant who had been forgiven when he saw another servant that had owed him something, owed him, had a true debt. I mean, he really owed. He went over and choked him. <laughs> I Trust me, I understand this. I'll choke you down. When you finally, that rage begins to come out of you. And some of you are walking around and you're so buzzed there are still so many bee stingers inside of you because your core trauma has not been dealt with. Therefore, your situational trauma has not been dealt with. And there are many of you who have been sexually abused. You have been horrifically abused. You have been, you have been treated less than. There are many. Well, guess whose idea it was for people to treat each other well? It wasn't yours. That doesn't belong to any particular class of people. That was God's. You see, God has a way of living and a way of life. Hmm? That when it is worked against and gone against, it causes unbelievable trauma in people's lives. Hmm? Do you understand that when man is in charge and, and man is, is the source, whether that's you or someone else, 
Do you understand? That is some wicked stuff. Something wicked this way comes. And until we as his church, as his people, we have to come out of that. I'm not going to be tapping on your good and tell you you need to be better to me. I'm like, you, you ain't got what I need. Only they, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, have what I need. Meaning that depth, but when man decides, no, I don't need God, I just need people to behave better, okay, right? But here's where we've got to look at is that God has said, I hear you, I see you, justice will flow. Oh my, when it comes from the Spirit of God, the cross of Jesus being released inside of you, I'm going to tell you, you're going to realize what a sad cup of water you've been drinking out of trying to get from people. Because boom, it'll be like iron to your soul. And now you can go forth speaking of him and talking about him. I'm a witness of him. I know him here. Have this cup, the cup that will satisfy your cry for justice and your cry for people to truly get up and treat each other with dignity. Where does that come from? That comes from God himself. That comes from him. So I don't want you to stay in your trauma bond. I don't want that trauma tattoo that was inked on you early in life. Even though the events may be over, that, that ink of that trauma is still bleeding all through you. And you're still got your hands around so many people's throats. Pay me what you owe me. There is no one, no one who has paid for all sin except for Jesus. No person can give you what you need. Now, when we get truly rectified, if you will, if we get truly returned to him, then, my friends, then we can be those who can help to reconcile. But we won't be putting the demand on people. But we'll be declaring his way and calling people to him and to his way. Hmm? So, there is so much, so much, to be able to take in and to be discipled and see if we're not educated, the true discipleship, and I don't mean up here. I'm talking about being literally raised and trained in the way of the cross, this way of life. This has to happen for us to mature. So how buzzed are you, my friend? Some of you have got multiple bee stingers inside of you and you're getting set off by everything that goes on to the point that you're tired, to the point that you're broke down, to the point that you, you, you're confused. You don't know which way. Oh, there's a way. There is a way. And his name is Jesus. Oh, yes, the simplicity almost, almost eludes us, doesn't it? because it is him, but probably and maybe not the way that you've known him before, but the way he wants to make himself known to you today. So there has to be a way that we begin to step in and we begin to let him truly educate and grow up his church into the fullness of Jesus. This has to happen. This has to happen because nobody, no person, can ultimately be your source. Hmm? And this is where divisions and cliques and factions and all that stuff is going to start happening is because you're just going to get with people who are triggered by the same stuff you are. You're going to get people who are buzzed about the same thing that you are rather than staying with the Father, the one who has truly, truly delivered you. So mm, we gotta, we've got to take hold of this. Because what trauma does is it disrupts our development. Hmm? So you might want to check out my most recent podcast on are you hitting your developmental maturity markers as a son, as a believer in Jesus? Are you really living like Jesus? Is his life in you being raised up and, and developed and matured, which that's your real life. That's who you really are. We're not here just trying to imitate Jesus, my friends. We're living the same life. And, and this disturbs me deeply, <laughs> all right, is when I see the development of the sons of God shut down hmm? and everybody going into their corner, picking their 
divisions and factions. I'm just going to stay with the Father and move on with Him. Hmm? Because it tells me in the Scripture that all of creation is standing on tiptoe waiting for the sons of the living God to show up, strong and mature. Hmm? That one new man that God Himself created not Jew or Greek, not male, not female, not known by all its external distinctions. Did you know that that's how the enemy divides is by all the external? God unites by the internal. A.W. Tozer once said that, you know, the, the, you don't get pianos in tune by trying to tune them to each other. You have one tuning fork. You get all 100 pianos tuned to the same fork and then guess what? Then they'll be in tune with each other. And this is what Holy Spirit is doing. He wants to get the church tuned to himself. And that's what will put us in tune with each other. Not clones of each other, but because we're in tune with him, then we become tuned to each other. And then we can move as one. But my friends, it begins by each person personally, personally having to come to him because he is the only one who knows your trauma and he's the only one who can settle it all. And every beast stinger will get dealt with. Then, no matter what's going on out here, you can walk into the chaos and it won't trip you. It won't trigger you. It won't completely shut you down. And all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then you go back into all your old stuff. Mm -mm. We got to stop being clever and we've got to come back to the cross. He knows what he's doing. He has the perfection of all things ready for you so that it'll return you to him as your source and then he can send you anywhere with anybody at any time to do anything without it tripping you up or triggering you out. Hmm? Let's let him deal with everything. Hmm? I don't want you to stay buzzed. I don't want that to remain the condition that we're in because he's exposing it. Remember, he's exposing it. All our clever ways, trying to be all that. No, no. See, once he brings us back to the cross, that's what your father provided for himself. If that's what it took to satisfy his wrath concerning sin and the sin nature that, that was the enemy of him, hmm? What makes you think is going to take anything less to satisfy your wrath, your anger, your offense, your trauma? Hmm? It was good enough for God. It's good enough for me. Set you free hmm? so that we can move on with him. All right? So thanks for being on with me today. Love you all. Bye.